Beloved of God, we thank God for this time again. Praise his holy name who takes good care of us every moment. And we appreciate his ever, ever flowing love for you and me. And he takes good care of us. And so we say, praise the Lord again. We continue ourselves in God's presence because without him, we are nothing. And so I'm so glad that we have moments like this to interact with his word. That is our life because uh, his words mean a lot. They give meaning to what we are. And so we proceed on uh, interacting with biblical figures. Something that I have dealt, I've dived into, and it means a lot for me. And uh, there are men and women that trusted God, and God did great things in their lives. And so the person that we shall continue uh, interacting with um, in the next moments is the prophet Elisha. A prophet Elisha, the man that asked his master Elijah for a double portion. And this double portion, friends, I've discovered it means a lot in the life of a prophet whom we read about, but also in the life of us all who share about his life. Elisha receiving a double portion from his master before he was taken up into heaven means that actually what Elijah did while he was still here on earth, Elisha doubles. He does it more than his master. Actually, the double portion meant a lot. That actually when you count the miracles that Elijah performed, Elisha's miracles double those of Elijah. And so we are going to dwell a little bit, um, even in the next few episodes, about this man, Elisha. But this time, the man that received a double portion from his master, we are going to share about one or two or three of his miracles that he performed. And in the Old Testament, Elisha is known to be a miracle prophet, a miracle worker prophet. He performed generally well, and God's presence was over him. And having received a double portion from his master, indeed, he utilized it. He utilized it, and remember, his master had cautioned him, until you see me be taken away, then um, you will not receive. And so Elisha remained faithful, and he remained focused on his goal. And it's a point that I want to also to begin with, that remain focused when you need something. And so one of the, pro one of the uh, miracles that Elisha performed that I want to begin with is one that he dealt with a poor widow, a woman. And just like his master Elijah was dealing with those kind of vulnerable people. And so we begin with this old, I mean, this woman who had nothing in the house, but she says something. And this is in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verses 1 following. I just want to read a few things because the words that I'm going to speak are from here. And now the Bible says, now the wife of one of the sons of prophets cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord but the creditor has come to take my two sons, my two children, to be slaves. And in verse 2, the Bible says, And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. And she said, Your servant has nothing but a jar of oil, except a jar of oil. Then he said to her, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and power into the vessel. And when she is, when one is full, set it aside. So she went in, she went, she, she sent, so she went from him and, sat, and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she powered, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were all full, 
She said to her son, bring me another. And Hassan said, no, there is no another. There's not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. Listen, friends, this is a very, very, very wonderful passage. The old woman with her two sons, the husband is dead and she has nowhere to face. Here comes the man of God, prophet Elisha. And the woman takes opportunity of what she has seen, encounter with the man of God. And she proclaims your servant, the prophet who was her husband had died and now the creditor was taking her sons as um, collateral or whatever it is, security. And uh, because there was nothing, so they were to be taken as slaves. Now this cry of the woman, the Bible says she cried. There is a secret before God when a person, when a believer cries to God. There's a deep secret. And for Elijah, this ignites him very highly. It brings him to duty. Now when he, he sees the woman crying, he knows duty is here. He knows work is here. He knows my obligation must be fulfilled. I asked for my master a double portion. And remember, Elijah had also dealt with such category of people. Remember the old woman at Zarephath, the one whom he had asked, give me some water, also bring me some bread. And then he said, I have nothing, only a little oil only a little bread, only a little flour, and after we eat and my son, we die. Remember, this is very, 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 very connecting. But then this woman cries to Elijah and says, nothing in the house, yet my sons are to be taken, and they are going to serve as slaves for the man that lent my husband money. And so, remember, friends, that from time then, even now, widowhood is a moment of sadness when someone's husband dies. Of course, we men, in many, many cases, we are taken to be the security. The Bible talks about we men, I mean men, as the head of the family. And so it is security of the family. But now the prophet, the man has died, the wife has remained, and they had a date. So coupled with many, many things, this widowhood meant a lot for this woman. It was her moment of sadness. It, she was, they were in a dangerous state because the sons were to be taken. She was vulnerable because she, was not, she had nobody to run to. But listen, God brings this man of God, Elisha, to deal with this situation. She was need, in need indeed. She, also, she desired something. And it was a moment of loneliness. She was, she could touch, you touch nowhere. And so she remained wondering, what do I do? Now, at the moment she wonders, at the moment she had stopped thinking, God brings Elisha. And Elisha comes into her life and she cries to him, said, man, this is what is happening. This is a situation. And so friends, we may be facing similar situations. It may not be widowhood, but it may be something else. But the thing is, being um, at a crossroad, but expectant that God at one time will answer your prayer, will meet your need. And so I have desired indeed to learn lots from prophet Elisha. And one of the things that I've learned that I'm learning is this a miracle story that is being told in Second Kings chapter 4. And so I ask one thing, the first thing is, is there any trouble in your life? And of course the answer is definitely yes. Because all of us go through these tumultuous times, trouble sometimes. And this woman was in trouble. So point number one, very, very important, is all of us are in trouble could be at a personal level. This woman was having this trouble as a family with her two sons, the husband is dead, and there is a date to be paid. And so that was their trouble. But one thing that I actually discover is God is concerned. At the time when you're in trouble, 
even when you are alone, or you are as a family in trouble, God cares about you, and so is his concerned. Just like he was concerned with the Israelites when they were in Egypt. When you read Exodus chapter 2, chapter 3, we see God is concerned. And even during our time, God remains concerned about our need. And so this woman was really in need, and God was timely. That's one other thing that actually we need to know, that God's help comes at a time we need it most. And so this woman's help came at a time when she needed it most, and there it was. And that's why it's called a miracle, because it beats the laws of nature. You are not expecting it, it comes. And so all of us do expect those God working, God working in our lives, and those miracles, still wonder workings that happen every day. And this woman did not expect it, but there it was. And then one other thing that I learned from Prophet Elijah and this woman, you see, Elijah asked, what do you have? And she says, no, 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 my master, I have nothing. But, and so for me, I counted that, but very, very important, but a little jar of oil. Now the Bible is asking us, what do you have? You know, you may be having whatever it is, little, but you minimize it, you despise it, but God can use whatever you have, little that may be, but he can use it, a little oil in a jar. And this is what happens that Elisha uses. And also remember, we have talked about prophet Elijah with the other widow of Zarephath. And the woman says, I have little flour and we eat it and die. But even then, 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 Elijah performed a miracle in that woman's life. And now here, Elisha does the same. And so God asks you, what is it that you have? So you may be having a little and you think that, and you are better off with that little with no other than having nothing. Now, as you cry, remember, maybe you have a little, there's someone who has nothing. And we heard of a story of someone who was crying that his legs, that he had the legs, but he had no shoes on. So he was crying, oh God, oh God, oh God. But he has both legs, but it's on the shoes that he doesn't have. But when he moved and he found someone, oh, well, 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 with no feet, with no legs, said, okay, God, thank you, that even when I don't have the shoes, I have my legs. So may God help you to discover something and be content, not just being content, but be contenting in God's favor, God's grace, God's help. And also this, this woman with her little oil, the Bible is telling us that actually Elijah told her, go in, borrow vessels, and he filled, and he filled, and he filled, until the last one. This is when the oil stopped flowing. So we pray that God, who used Elisha, we use many more others on in our life, but also we positioning ourselves for God's favor to rest upon us. And I'm purposing this season. You purpose this season that God uses. There could be anything that God can use to perform something great in your life. And I've also learned actually that this woman, when she heard Elijah mention, she trusted. She trusted Elijah's word, Elisha's word. And so she witnessed a miracle of multiplication. And I'm also believing that actually we're also going to witness this happening in our life and just positioning herself and remaining focused there. So this woman trusted Elisha's word and she went and she did what Elisha had told her and he listened to what happened. She achieved what she wanted. And so this point that is, we're talking about is God is asking you to do your part. Now this woman had to do her part go and ask for the vessels from the neighbors so she, she ran about doing her part now power into into those vessels she did her part now many times we have sat and cried to god but the issue that we are learning here is that the woman did her part whatever she was being told to do she went and did it do this she went and did it do this she went and did it and so the point that we are making here is the times when you just sit and you think, okay, the miracle will come from, but God may be asking you something to do. And then as you do it, your miracle breaks. Your miracle comes. I mean, it dawns 
and something happens for you. And so this woman did her part. So God uses even the very little that you may be having as long as you are able to harness to do a little bit more, to take an extra mile, to trust his word when he says it and you do it. And so God speaks and I'm believing that God even this one is speaking. And one thing that I want to wind up with is what we are grappling with now is the issue of single parents. Now this woman, the husband dead, children, but also with the challenges that are debts, poverty was an issue, and therefore they were vulnerable, they were poor, and all things like that. But now, single parenting becomes a challenge at this point. When you see this woman struggling, she has nobody to run to, but her only hope remained, because her husband was a prophet, one of uh, those that served with Elisha, and that's why she's introducing in verse 1 and says, your servant, my husband, has died and my sons and have uh, been taken as um, security because we had a date. But Elisha uh, does something here for her. Now, single parenting is actually a hard one. And we speak about this maybe in your community and sometimes maybe yourself or something. And these things are, I mean, come at any time. So single parents can experience also, can also experience the love of God. And so I, as you get out there to speak to somebody, to encourage somebody, it may not be yourself, but say, like this woman was, God came to her rescue, and God can still do something, whether married or not married. Stay trustful to God. No? Also, work. Work hard. This woman worked. This woman went out of her way when the prophet told her, go and borrow, go and do this. She went and did it. Work hard. And so be in position as you help, as you ask for help, but you're also able to do something that God is going to use your effort to multiply what you need. So this story is about how God cares for his people and no problem is too great for God. And as I wind up, I repeat that there is no problem which is greater than God, which is greater to God. And so I just want to wind up with a portion from Jesus' teachings in Luke chapter 12 and verses 6 and 7. So Jesus has this to say. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why even the hair of your head are all numbered? Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, that we are worth more. And so you are worth more. I have discovered that I'm worth more. Whatever challenges, whatever trouble, God cares. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.